Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, welcome. So happy to have you guys here. And in today's video, I'm going to talk all about molting. What is molting? How do I know when my bird is molting? What to do and what to not do and things like that. So parrots molt. They go through a molting season every single year and this usually happens once or twice a year, depending on the bird. And baby birds are gonna go through their first molting as well. Once they have feathers and they have their first molt, they'll be molting all over the place. I find feathers all over the place all of the time because Mia is a baby bird going through her first molt. So there's like extra feathers. I've actually been collecting Mia's feathers. And as you can see, there's a lot of them in here. And these are just little cute baby feathers. Ooh, we dropped one. <laughs> Got it. And this isn't even all of her feathers that she's molted because the rest of them I just vacuum up when I'm cleaning because there's just so many of them. During molting, you'll notice that your bird is preening a lot more. They're enjoying to have baths more frequently and they really enjoy getting scritches or being preened by their companion birds. But you might be wondering what is molting or what does it mean when my bird is molting? When a parrot is molting, it simply means that it's the bird's circadian clock that's saying it's once again time to overhaul its plumage, replacing old and worn out feathers with sparkling beautiful new ones that ensure your parrot will be able to fly effectively and stay protected from the elements. Molting can last anywhere from a few weeks to a couple of months. You'll know that your bird is molting because you'll see them preening more, trying to have more baths and really love those scratches, but you're also going to start to find feathers all over the floor and their cage. Let's talk a little bit about what pin feathers are because pin feathers are a big part of molting. Because feathering plays a vital role in their well-being, parrots lose their old, worn feathers often during the year to make room for the regrowth of new feathers. Every time a feather is dropped, a new one will emerge through the vacant follicle in their skin. The pin feather is the name given to the prickly beginnings of a new feather making its way out. They first appear as a thin tube, which is pink on the bottom and white towards the top. The pink area is a live blood supply that will nourish the feather while it is maturing and will eventually recede. The white part of the tube is a keratin casing, which protects the forming feather. If you are like me and you love to help your bird preen their pennies, you can tell the time is right when the white casing is no longer and it easily crumbles away without much pressure. Never preen a pin feather that's not ready as it can cause a blood feather. Even if a bird is stressed and over preens, they can cause a blood feather and we don't want to experience that. Now, one thing that is really great about helping your bird preen their pin feathers is it makes their life a little bit more comfortable, but it's also a really great bonding experience with your bird. Parrots can take care of their pin feathers across their body. The only place that they can't reach with their beak to open any pin feathers is right on their head and that immediate vicinity. So in the wild, a parrot would depend on its mate or flock to assist with pin feathers on the head and around the neck. But at home, a parrot is going to rely on its owner for a little help with those feathers. You wanna make sure that you are preening your bird's pin feathers correctly because if it is done wrong, it can cause frustration with your bird and then with you and they might even bite you. Right, Mia? You tell them. When your bird is molting, here are four don'ts and then we'll get to the do's. First one is just remember, don't open immature pin feathers. We don't want to open those because like I mentioned, it can cause a blood feather and it's just not safe. Number two, don't be too rough. You wanna be really gentle with your bird so that they trust you to preen them. You also don't want to force this kind of help on a bird that doesn't want it. So if your bird doesn't want to be preened or doesn't want to be preened by you, just let it be and don't force this on them. Do you see what Mia's doing? So she's putting her head in between my fingers because 
that's her sign to me. I need some help on my head and around my neck. Oh, sorry. That was a new pen feather. So my fourth tip with this is make sure that you're not preening pin feathers anywhere on your bird's body that they can reach themselves. So the only place that I ever preen Mia or Mango is on top of their head and around their neck and on their face and their little cute cheeks over here. Do's, you do want to have a request signal. So as you might have seen before, Mia was trying to put her head in between my fingers. Sometimes she bites my knuckles or my nails like this and that's her indication of please preen me with those fingers. Now that is a bad habit, so I tend to not do that, but usually she'll put her hand in between my fingers and that is her indicator to me or her signal that she wants me to bring her. You do want to offer and help your bird with these pin feathers and you're just going to gently scratch them out and they should fall apart and break apart really easily but the best ones to focus on is when you can already see the feather popping out of the pin already. Number three, do open mature pin feathers that are on their head and neck. Number four, Use this as a training opportunity and a bonding opportunity. So you can always reward your bird after a really good preening or scritch session. So pin feathers will look like little soda straws. If you don't see a bit of feather sticking out, then definitely leave these ones alone. The feather is not ready yet and that's an immature pin feather. Not only can opening a feather prematurely damage the feather, it can also hurt your parrot or cause them to bite you. If in doubt, leave a pin feather to later than too soon. Pin feathers that are ready or mature to be opened will often be sticking out just a little bit above normal feathers. The tip of the pin will be open with the feather slightly visible and will have a more flaky appearance compared to the really streamlined and perfect immature pins. Undeveloped or baby feathers are also called pin feathers. This is when they're babies and at this stage feathers are actually living tissue each with their own blood source. Pin feathers look like little quills that are a transparent shade of purple since they are filled with blood. The blood transports essential nutrients for optimum feather growth. What are a couple of things to be mindful of when your bird is going through this molting phase? Now, molting does take more energy and usually your bird is going to be exerting that and probably feeling more tired or a little bit more agitated at times. You always want to have a well-balanced diet for your bird that's going to feed and nourish their little bodies during this molting season. It's going to include fruits, veggies, legumes, grains, good quality pellets, and all the things that we talk about all the time when it comes to diet. Clean, fresh water and all that good stuff. Your bird might eat 25% more than usual when they're molting because they're using up more energy, therefore they're more hungry. You also want to expose your bird during this time to more sunlight if possible or get one of those lamps so that they can get their vitamin D in. You also want to keep your environment nice and warm to protect your bird. You also want to make sure that they're avoiding any drafts. So if they have little pin feathers or not enough feathers that are coming through and they have a small patch missing, you don't want them to catch cold or get cold. You also want to make sure that you're helping you or encouraging your bird to have more baths by misting them or just offering water dishes where they can bathe on a regular basis. And during a molting phase, you just want to make sure that your bird is not stressed out and just minimize any types of stressful situations because molting is stressful enough, right Mia? That's it for today, guys. I hope that you liked this video, that it was helpful. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.